All right. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I have a a blog site, which I guess I've kind of debated on whether I should have that because it's just so easy just to like to f make a video of it and just like turn this turn the camera on and just talk. You know, it's much easier to do that than it is to write. Um, but I have a blog site which I'm actually gonna post things on because I think it's would be worth my time to do that. Um, now it'd probably be less formal. Um, it wouldn't be for the purpose of discussing a certain thing for the purpose of other people learning it. It's like for the purpose of um, to get more thought going, I guess. To get, to get more thought going other than... Because like here when I when I make a video, I do it for the, for the purpose of not, not only to help me understand a certain thing better, but to also, to if, to if someone else wants to understand some, 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 something better than they can through, through this, you know. So I have that. It's um, hemlocksgrip.wordpress.com, and I'll put that down there. And I'll, I'll probably put that on my uh, YouTube page somewhere as well, and my Twitter as well. Uh, my Twitter is phenomenal, so I'll put that down there as well. <clears throat> And if you were to ever have a question on anything that I have on, or, you know, if you want to, um, if you have a question on really anything within philosophy, and, you know, I, I may know something about that. I know a lot. You know, I do know some, some things about that. I've been thoroughly, uh, trained as, you know, I, I mean, I have, I, I, I've been trained to a certain degree. Anyway, um, in this video, I want to. Well, there's two videos I want to do left in the problem of, in the problem of evil, and they're out of this book, the philosophy of religion anthology by Kwamin Ray. Um, first of all, in this section, I've done Leibniz, Hume, um, yeah, did Leib Leibniz and Hume and. Uh, I think I've done some other some other things as well about the problem of evil, um, and I'll probably do like a, just a separate video where I'm where some stuff where I'm, where I'm thinking about. But I'm gonna do this one right now. I'm planting a, and the next one on William Rowe. Um, now this the article here is the free will defense. Um, I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk about this whole article, and the reason for that is because this first part, and this is from from his book God, Freedom, and Evil by Alan by Alvin Plantinga. Um, that's, a, that, that's a great book. If you want to read his writings on philosophy of religion, you know, that's one book out of many of his that are great for that. Um, so this, there's a part in here, Does the Theist con Contradict Himself? It's that one I'm going to be really talking about. I'm not going to talk about this whole thing here. Um, but um, the, the free will defense. What is the free will defense? What is he defending... Um, and it has to do with the free will theodicy. <clears throat> um, in, what, in what follows, I shall focus attention upon the free will defense. I shall examine it more closely and state it more exactly and consider objections to it. Um, earlier we saw, saw, saw that among good states of affairs, there are some that, that not even God can bring about without bringing about evil. Um, okay, what is the free will defense? Um, so how does the free will defense work, and what does the free free will defense me defender mean when he says that that, that the people are or may be free? What is relevant to, 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 to the free will defense is the idea of being free with respect to an action. And then, uh, in the free will defense, he's kind of um, the free will defense can be looked upon as an effort to show that there that there may be a very different kind of good that, that God can't bring about without permitting evil. So it has to do with free will. Like evil has to do with free will. Uh, the, the evil and good has to do with free free will. And um, and there's issues as to whether we are free, as to whether God is free in what he, what he does. Um, you know, there's various things on this, and I really don't want to get into. Um, his free will defense. What I want to get into is this issues, and I guess I, I could also do a video on Mackey, J.L. Mackey's evil and omnipotence. But the thing is, is that planting that I think pretty well sums it up and kind of 
ref refutes it, really. And there's a question, does the theist con contradict himself? Because the problem of evil is um, basically centered around this, so this whole question, is how can there be a omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, omnibenevolent um, God who loves us and is involved in our lives when there's so much evil and intense suffering and all these bad things going on here. That's basically the, the big question that um, is posed to theists. Um, and there's various reasons for that. There's various, there's various responses. And, you know, and then if you read Leibniz's the Theodicy, which uh, I have a video on that, and then that, he kind of really does go over a lot of the main uh, objections to the argument from evil. So, Alvin Plantinga is asking, does the theist con 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 contradict himself in that, um, does, is the theist, uh, or is, <clears throat> does good and evil contradict itself when it's put into a set? Uh, and what Plantinga does is he really takes what Mackey does. Mackey, what, what Mackey is doing, he's putting the beliefs of the theist about God into a set with their being evil and trying to show a contradiction or a inconsistency, basically. Mackey says, I think, however, that a more telling criticism can be made by way of a traditional problem of, of evil. Here it can be shown not that religious beliefs lack rational support, but that they are positively irrational, that the several parts of the essential theological doctrine, do doctrine are inconsistent with one another. Okay, so... Then Plantinga goes over the various kinds of, con of, of con contradictions. We have explicit, formal, and implicit. An explicit contradiction um, is a proposition of a certain sort, a conjunctive pr pr proposition, one conjunctive, which is the denial or negation of another. For example, so he gives this, give, gives this example. Paul is a good ten ten tennis player. Paul is a good tennis player, and it's false that God is a, or that it's false that Paul is a good tennis player. So basically, if you have in a set proposition one, and then you have the proposition not one, if you have the proposition and its and its negation in the set, then you have a inconsistent contradictory set, and that is a explicit contradiction. Okay, people are going to not really do that do, do that very much. So then, what what you know is it then is what, and then what what about a formal one a formal contradiction? A formal contradiction is one that um, if you that that you could that you could deduce from the set the the, the denial of one or more of the propositions of the set. Um, if all men are mortal, then Socrates is mortal. Okay, here's one. For if all men are mortal, then Socrates is mortal. Five, all men are mortal. Six, Socrates is not mortal. So there's no, you know, the four is not a denial of five or six, and there's no explicit contradiction here. It's, you know, you, you could deduce a seventh one, Socrates is, or you, you, you could deduce a, a seventh one, Socrates is mortal, from that, and then thus you could have that. So basically a formal contradiction is where you could um, deduce for, 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 from, from the set a new proposition, which then would you have a explicit one. Okay, and then uh, Plantinga asks, is Mackey saying that a theist um, is leading to, a, to an explicit or a formal contradiction in, in what he says in, in his beliefs. And then he says, no. No laws of logic permit us to deduce the the denial of the propositions in A from the, the, the other members. Set A isn't formally con contradictory either, either. So this set, this set A, this set A is um, Mackie said that he's, put, he's, put, he's, put, he's putting together to kind of um, show that the theist contradicts himself. Number one, God is om omnipotent. God is all, all powerful. Two, God is wholly good. And three, evil 
exists. And from those three things, there is no law of logic where you could deduce a fourth proposition where you would get a a uh, inconsistency or a contradiction. Um, neither is there a explicit one there either. Because, I mean, think about it. God is omnipotent, God is holy good, and evil exists. No, there's no... There's nothing there that is explicit or formal uh, c contradiction or inconsistency. Okay, what about an implicit con contradiction? What, what, what about that? Okay, um, an implicit one. An implicit con contradiction. Suppose we, we say that a set is implicitly contradictory if it, if it resembles C. Um, older than Paul, and Paul is older than Nick. And George is not older than Nick. <laughs> okay, so George is older than Paul. Paul is older than Nick. So it's George is the oldest, then Paul, then Nick. And then the, the three, George is not is not older than Nick. Um, that's set, set C. Suppose we say that a set is implicitly, implicitly contradictory if it, if it resembles C in this, in, a, in this respect. That is, a set S of prepositions is implicitly c contradictory if there is a necessary preposition P su su such that the result of adding P to S in a formally, is a formally contradictory set. So, then we add 4. If George is older than Paul and Paul is older than Nick, then George is, is older than Nick. Okay, so that fourth one, it's like... <clears throat> that four, you could... You could... It's like you. It's like if you if you don't have any formal, if you don't have a formal contradiction either, then you can, you know, create a another proposition that would, if you if you if you added it to it, you have a formal, a formal contradiction. So then, does set A this God set have um, a implicit one? And um, he, he also says that, no, um, this God said is not implicitly contradictory either. Uh, <clears throat> However, the contradiction does not arise immediately. To show it, we need some additional premises, or perhaps some quasi-logical quasi rules connecting the, the terms good and evil and, omni and uh, omnipotent. These additional principles are that, are that good is opposed to evil in, su in, su in such a way that a good thing always eliminates evil as, as far as it can, and, and that there are no limits to what an, an omnipotent thing can do. Okay, from these it follows that a good om omnipotent, omnipotent thing eliminates evil com evil completely, and then the prepositions that a good omnipotent thing exists and that evil and that evil exists are incompatible. <clears throat> okay, from this. From this, I guess basically what he's showing, what Plantinga has shown, from his little, from Mackey's little um, statements about, about additional premises, <clears throat> is that the set is not contradictory in really any sense, <clears throat> and he does this by <clears throat> showing number one what it means for something to be properly eliminated, for a evil to be properly eliminated, <clears throat> and also that good and evil are conjunctive, that um, they're related well, and that's... <clears throat> yeah. Um, and then... Uh, and then uh, planting a aims to bring two things to this set, this set A. Number 19, a good thing always eliminates evil as far as it can. Um, number 20, there are no limits to what, to what an omnipotent being can do. <clears throat> and then this is, an omnipotent being has no non-logical limits. It, or it's, there are, there are logical limits to it. Like, basically, most theists even will say that a, that a god can't can't create a square circle. 
things like that. There are the only limits to an omnipotent being are the logical limits. <clears throat> All right, what else? Um, <clears throat> and then planting it brings about examples here. Um, what does it mean to properly eliminate? Um, number 19b, a good being eliminates every evil E that it knows about and that it can eliminate without either bringing about a greater, a greater evil or eliminating a good state of affairs that, that, that outweighs E. <clears throat> Is this ne necessarily true? It, it takes care of the second of the two difficulties arising in, in, in 19a. 19a is that every good thing always eliminates every, every evil that it knows about and can eliminate. Um, we can see that the, we can see we can see this as, as follows. First, suppose we say that it being properly eliminates an evil state of affairs if it if it eliminates that evil without either eliminating an outweighing good or bringing about a greater greater evil. Okay, so to properly eliminate a certain evil, you know about it and you can do it without eliminating a, without eliminating a greater good and without bringing about a greater greater evil. So, like, this is the big thing that people will say to to uh, uh, atheists, like, oh, well, if you eliminate all the evils, <clears throat> then you will not be able to have greater goods. And if you eliminate certain evils or certain... Yeah, if you uh, eliminate certain evils, then you will bring about greater evils. Um... So this is what proper proper elimination is. That you can do it and that you know about it. And, and that you can do it without bringing about greater evil or preventing or without um, con conflicting without greater goods being brought about. All right. Um, <clears throat> you know, here's the whole Mackie set. Number one, God is omnipotent. God is holy good. God is omniscient. Evil exists... And then 19C, an omnipotent, omniscient good being eliminates every evil that it can properly eliminate. In 20, there are no non-logical limits to what an omnipotent being can do. Is that contradictory in any sense? No. And here's like a, here's like a big thing here. Planting a gives examples as to how evil and good are conjunctive. It is not very often that you have one without without having the, the other. It's like this kind of fairyland that fairyland idea that people think about, oh, we can have good without 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 evil. And I mean, I don't see that happening. So And then the thing that you would have to have to bring about a formal contradiction in this set, um, what you have to do uh, is to bring out a, is to bring about a certain proposition and add it to it to produce a, a contradiction or an or an or an inconsistency. Um, <clears throat> You would have to bring about into it three a number a, a new a new a, a new pr principle. There is no evil that God can properly eliminate. <clears throat> you would have to Mackey or any other a, or any other a theologian would have to add that principle to the to to the whole set to create any kind of contradiction or inconsistency. <clears throat> okay, um, but is the fact that there is no evil that God can properly eliminate true. Is there evils that God can properly eliminate? And I would say there are no that there are no evils. Oh no, it, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a different one. If God is omniscient and omnipotent, then He can properly eliminate every every evil. State of affairs. It's that one that that the 
a theologian must add to the whole set to create a, a contradiction or an inconsistency. I was wrong. I, I, I apologize. Um, I was I was looking at I was looking at something something different that I had that I had highlighted. The thing that you must do as a a theologian, you must add if the the proposition if God is omniscient and omnipotent, that then He can properly eliminate every evil st st state of affairs. Now, is that necessarily true? <clears throat> no, I would say no. Um, to see this, let us ask the, the, the following question. Under what conditions would an omnipotent being be, be unable to eliminate a certain evil, E, without eliminating on outweighing good? Well, suppose that E is included in some good state of affairs that outweighs it. That is, suppose there is some good state of affairs, G, related to an E that is that, that, that it is impossible to... It is, it is impossible that G obtain or be actual and E fail to obtain. So, let's say we have a G and an E and it's possible, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not possible for one to actualize without, without, without the other. Now, I suppose that, that, that some good, good state of affairs, G, includes an evil state of affairs, E, that it, that it outweighs. Then not even an omnipotent being could, could eliminate E without eliminating G. But there are, but are there any cases where a good state of affairs includes, in this sense, an evil that it, that it outweighs? Indeed, there are such states of affairs. So, what Planckard does here is he not only shows that there is no contradiction in in Mackey's set, he shows that, and he also shows the conjunctiveness between good and evil, and that you can't have one good or evil without another good or evil. You can't have good or evil without the other. You can't have good without evil, and you can't have evil without good. Um, and there are various examples. Um, to take an artificial example, let's suppose E is Paul suffering from, 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 a, from a minor abrasion. G is your being deliriously happy. The conjunctive st state of affairs G and E, the, st the, st the state of affairs that, that obtains, if and only if both G and E obtain, is then a good st state of affairs. It is better, all else being equal, that you be intensely happy and Paul suffer a mildly annoying abrasion than this st state of affairs n not obtain. So G and E is a good st state of affairs, and clearly G and, e and G, G and E includes E. Obviously, it is, it is necessarily true that if you are deliriously happy and Paul is suffering from, from an abrasion, then Paul is suffering from an abrasion. Another good example is another example that, that he gives is let's say you have this, you know, you were rock climbing and you're a novice and you get a bunch of bruises on your legs because you're not very, very, you're not really good at it and you kind of hurt yourself and you get all these bruises that are horribly, not like horribly annoying, but they're, they're they're annoying and they hurt. And then then you go and then you you uh, uh, go to the doctor. And they said you just have to let him heal. There's, no, there's nothing I can do. You just have to let him heal and just get get, get some rest. So that's that's a, that that's evil. A mild, a, a lesser evil. The only way to really, I guess, take care of that evil right there. Uh, to to Im to eliminate that one evil right there is to bring about a greater evil, and the way you would get rid of that evil is to amputate the leg. You would you would, you would no longer have pain. I mean, you would probably have some pain from getting it cut off, uh, maybe a little, um, you know, uh, and uh, you would you would have that, and. Uh, so you have a greater evil of no longer having a leg because of a lesser evil of your bruises. That is a kind of a weird, a weird, a weird example, but it's kind of like how it's just kind of showing how good and evil are connected, and that um, you know, um, it's also the case. Um, let me think of another example. Like if you read. If you read Marcel Proust's uh, *The Sweet*, *The Sweet Cheek Gone*, um, in that book, 
which I've which I have read parts of. Um, what what occurs in that is that uh, he goes through various trials in in, in, in his life, and uh, you know it's kind of rather difficult for him, and he, you know, you know, um, at a certain point, he's like, well, I don't regret the sufferings I've had and the bad and the bad trials that I've had because they make me who I am now. You know, are they, you know, that's kind of like a character d- d- development sort of. They make me who I am today. So I don't regret like that's merely what is being tried. What I'm trying to show here is that good is connected to, to evil, and they're conductive, and that's very difficult and rare to have one without without the other. So that's what I'm what I'm saying. And um, what else here? What else did I want to discuss? And I think um, there's various other ways you can show that um, that good and evil are con- are conjunctive. That uh, if you have good, you have evil somewhere. There's good. There's good connected to evil, and it's just like that's pretty much the way it is. Um, there's various there's various ways you can, that you can show it if you just look at, you know, um, for instance, uh, Joyce Meyer, uh, a evangelist who who, go, who goes around and you know preaches and she, she has a TV show and has various you know books and stuff, and uh, she was abused many many times by her father when she was young. And she was bitter throughout her throughout her life, and um, you know she, you know, pretty much dealt 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 with a lot, and you know blamed her problems on what had happened to her for a very very long time. But then you know, um, if you're if you're not a theist, this this might not, you know, this might not be a good, and might might not be a good example for you. But uh, essentially, what happened is she realized that. She should just trust God and stop blaming her her issues on things and stop and stop living by her by her emotions and stop you know you know um, allowing her emotions to govern her and just take charge and not allow the you know you know you know not allow the emotions to you know cloud what 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 she wants to do and she recently started talking about what, what had happened to her and she she said in 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 uh, uh she, she 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 said while preaching i can't honestly say i re- regret this this happening to me um because i am a truly healed healed person from it i'm truly healed from it you know and they that those things make me who i am today and have and have allowed me to help to help others be happy in their lives here. So, you know, that's a very religious way of looking at things, of course. But I think that alone, her being abused by her father 200 times, um, I think alone, you know, and then her being her saying, you know, I can't honestly say, say that I regret this happening because they make me who I am today so that I can help people as I am doing That alone, I think, is a very good, very, very good example of how evil is is connected to good. And I could go on for for, for a really, really long time talking about how evil is con- is conjuncted with good. But I, 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 you know, I honestly think it is, and I think it's also the also the case that uh, Mackie said is not cut is not contradictory. The the way that he goes about doing this is trying to show. Is trying to show that good that good and evil are not conjunctive, and that good and evil are contradictory in their stances with each other, when they really are not. And what what he would have to do is to show that they his he, he, what he would have to do is to show that um, that a god, um, that an that an omniscient um, omnipotent God um, is there that then he can properly eliminate every evil state of affairs. And that is not that is not that is not the case. 
Because I also think that if he were, if he, if he, um, yeah, I also think that, you know, eliminating all of the evil would be, uh, would be eliminating all of the good. So anyway, let me, let me uh, know what you think. I, I honestly think that the showing that evil and good are conjunctive and that, and that, uh, they're not contradictory when when put into a set. Goes against Ma Mackey's argument pretty well. And then next, I'm gonna probably talk about William Rowe and uh, end these videos on problem of evil and go on to uh, religious epist ep epistemology and more in depth.